Welcome back to the Athletes Corner Podcast. I'm Sebastian, and today we have an MLB podcast for you guys. Um, I'm going to go over my current predictions for the uh, awards of the MLB season and also World Series predi- prediction. Um, also going to compare them to my preseason predictions that I had before the season started. And um, we're now on episode 22 of this podcast, so uh, that had that was probably about 10 episodes ago at this point. So yeah so i decided to get you guys an mlb video i know we've been doing a lot of nfl so uh i'm gonna get this one in there for you guys um so starting with the al uh my rookie of the year at the beginning of the season was uh nick madrigal and obviously he got hurt so it it really wasn't a shot for him uh he wasn't gonna have an opportunity to uh to get that award and also being traded to the cubs i know i've talked about it a lot charlie and i have talked about it um great player i mean there's nothing he can do about an injury uh if he were to stay healthy could he have gotten it sure i mean we we don't know because it was a long injury um but so i think instead of him it's going to be randy rosarena who i'm not sure i think charlie might have chosen at the beginning of the season but because see that was at that time when he had so much hype coming off of the playoff run of the rays last year i mean i still think he's a little overrated i don't think he does too much that's special i mean he's a real good player but i there's no there's not a lot of competition in the um in the rookie of the year category this year in both the al or the nl so it's it really can go any way you can pick a variety of guys and i mean you can't really go wrong but yeah i think a rosa rain is going to come away with the award um cy young uh, I had Garrett Cole at the, beginning, at the beginning of the season, and he could still win it. Um, uh, he's pitched he's pitched well, but not like his Astros Cy Young seasons. So I mean, I think he I think right now he's the runner up behind Robbie Ray, and unfortunately for the White Sox, they had two guys all season leading uh, Lance Lynn and Carlos Rodon. They were pretty much you could have picked one of the two, and they would have been in the lead of the Cy Young, and unfortunately. Rodon got hurt, Lance Lynn got hurt, Lance Lynn came back, struggled a little bit, still pitching well, I think he's probably in third place right now, um, but I know, I think Robbie Ray is a guy that I'm sure nobody picked at the beginning of the season, so I'd like to see him win it, um, Garrett Cole, you could see win it, but I mean, with just the name, but Robbie Ray's played outstanding for the Blue Jays, I mean, the Blue Jays are one game out of a wild card at this point of the of this recording, um so i mean blue jays i mean it could be the blue jays and yankees in the wild card matchup robbie ray versus garrett cole that could be a real good matchup if the if the red sox fall off a little bit i think they're two games ahead of the yankees and three again uh, ahead of the blue jays right now so i don't know i hope the i hope the blue jays make the playoffs i don't and i had the yankees at the beginning of the season for the world series but we'll talk about that later but i mean they might not even make the playoffs um, but no, the Blue Jays have a lot of talent on the team. Uh, so yeah, I think it's going to be Robbie Ray. Um, Garrett Cole hasn't done enough for me to be like, man, he's a shoe in Cy Young this year. Like there, there's a lot of more NL pitchers that are like that right now. Um, uh, I, I, I just don't think the AL Cy Young is very like dominant this year. There's a few guys that could win it, but, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be Robbie Ray. Um, so for MVP at the beginning of the season, I took Mike Trout and I said, if it wasn't Mike Trout, it's going to be Otani. So Mike Trout was hurt, obviously, most of the season since before the all-star break, uh, with his calf strain. So, um, he's not going to win it, obviously. Um, and he, he made the all-star game with a starter and didn't even play much, but that's just how the all-star game voting works. But yeah, so Otani's Otani's probably the front runner front runner right now behind or in front of Vlad and uh, Marcus Simeon, who was a uh, we talked about on the podcast a big free agent signing for the Blue Jays. Um, he has an absurd amount of home runs at second base, uh, and Vlad might get the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. might get the triple crown. So if if he gets the triple crown and Otani is still Otani. I mean, he can't do. He's in front right now, and if he went over whatever the rest of the season, he'd still be in front. Um, but he, what he's done has been something that nobody's ever done before: pitch and hit at an elite level, and pitch better than I think a lot of people thought he was going to, considering how good he was uh, hitting. 
Um, so Otani is going to win the award. Uh, if Vlad gets triple crown, I think he has a shot of getting the award over Otani. But the problem with that is there has been people that have gotten the triple crown in the past, and obviously they'll, they'll win MVPs, but nobody's ever done what Otani's done, pitch and hit at the same time, and we have great success doing both. And he didn't even have to be this good, and I think he still would have won the MVP. He would have just had to been dominant in one or the other. And he has 40 some home runs, so... I don't think he doesn't have the lead anymore because Vlad has it. But if Vlad can get uh, average, which I don't, I don't know if he's going to, uh, and keep the RBIs home runs, he could have a shot. I, I, I don't think they'll take it away from Otani, though, and that's what's crazy is even though Vlad has a possibility of getting the Triple Crown, um, Otani's still in the lead, and which is just crazy. It just shows how important Otani is to baseball, to his team, Um and it's important to everything. So I would like to see a co-MVP if Vlad were to get the Triple Crown. If he doesn't get the Triple Crown, I don't think this is a debate. I mean, I'm sure some people will think Vlad deserves it, but if if he gets Triple Crown, it would be cool to see a co-MVP. Um, I think that's a very valid way to introduce it because sometimes there's guys that are close and stats and this stuff, and it's all just opinion. But... To win a triple crown and not get an MVP, that'd be pretty crazy. And to do what Otani's doing and not get an MVP, that's also crazy. But then you had to think if Otani does it again next year, is he just going to win it every year? Is it going to be like a trout situation where people just get bored of giving it to him because he's dominating at both sides of the game? Um, okay, so moving on to the NL. Rookie of the year at the beginning of the season, I had Key Ryan Hayes, and he played well. Uh, very athletic. I saw him play in person. He's a very good player, but um, he he was hurt for a little bit. Didn't really get back going as well as he would ho- would have hoped. Um, so the NL Rookie of the Year, I think this year is going to be Jonathan India because he's been he's been really good this season. hasn't hasn't I I still don't think these guys these like I said before these Rookie of the Years these rookies um, that can win this award are doing anything that special. Uh, in terms of like stats and stuff like that, but India's been uh, a spark for the Reds uh, on a team that nobody thought would do as good as they're doing. I mean, maybe you had hopes with Cassianos and Winker, who were MVP candidates early in the season. The Reds lost Bauer in free agency to the Dodgers, so I mean, a lot of people probably thought that the Reds weren't going to be as good as they have played uh, this season, and obviously the Brewers are ahead of them, so with like 91 wins at this point, I think. So no, I bet Jonathan Indy has played well. He's an exciting player, so I think he's going to win it. Uh, Hayes isn't even in the conversation right now. Um, you got like Rogers on the on the uh, Marlins, but uh, I think India is going to run away with this one. Uh, and not because, like, like I've been saying, it's not because he like just outright deserved it. I just don't think there's a lot of competition at the at the uh, rookie level this year. Uh, Cy Young. So NL Cy Young always is Degrom, but Degrom unfortunately got hurt when he was having a MVP caliber season as a pitcher. And like, I think if he would have kept that up, he would have won the MVP. But um, right now, I think it's between Scherzer and Burns. I mean, Wheeler's still in there, but. Scherzer's been dominant with the Dodgers ever since they got him. And, I, I like, you could even talk about Trey Turner being an MVP candidate. So the Dodgers getting Scherzer and Turner, that's been huge for them. And they're still behind the Giants, so that's that's crazy. But um, it shows how good the Giants have been this season, being so impressive. As the, I'm sure their odds to make the postseason uh, before the season started would have been slim to none. Nobody thought that with the Padres in that division who might not even make the playoffs, who probably aren't going to make the playoffs, and the Dodgers, who were World Series favorites at the beginning of the season, it's just it's crazy to to think that the Dodgers now have Scherzer and Trey Turner on top of that. But uh, so since it can't be Degrom because he got hurt, I think it's going to be Scherzer. Um, Burns has played well, uh, got the got the Brewers to a real good record, uh, leading their division. But I think it's going to go to Scherzer. Add another one to his belt. I think he has two or three already. Um, so NL MVP, I think Juan Soto deserves it. The hype's around Harper right now because everyone likes to think that he's super underrated, which he, he is underrated. Like he used to be, he was such an exciting player before and then he left the Nationals and everyone just, he has, he struggled last year. So everyone's like, just wrote him off as being a bust, but he's been an MVP caliber player this season. And 
a lot of people think it's between Harper and Tatis, and people just automatically give it to Harper because Tatis, not a lot of people like Tatis right now because he had that altercation with Manny Machado. Um, he is a really bad defender, just being calling it how it is. He, he couldn't play shortstop, so he had to get moved to the outfield, and then he's dropping routine fly balls in the outfield. Like He's an inc- incredible athlete, but uh, his and his hitting stats are insane, and when he came back from in- injury before, uh, he started up right where he left off, but now he's not doing anything as good as he was earlier in the season. So um, Harper's definitely the favorite and definitely above Tatis, but I want to make an argument for Juan Soto. So Juan Soto was my pick um, originally before the season started. So, I mean, it would be real cool to see him win it. Soto's going to win an MVP, a couple of them, like at some point in his career. He's 22 and he's probably the best hitter in baseball right now. It's just he's just such a good hitter. His last, as, as this is being recorded, his last ten plate appearances, he's gotten on base with like three home runs, six RBIs, a few runs. Like it's 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 insane. So his average is three twenty five, which is leading the NL right now. And I actually I thought he was hurt. I mean he was hurt, but I thought he missed so much more time than he actually did because at the beginning of the season he didn't start off um, on the team because he was dealing with stuff. So. Um, so, but yeah, he has more plate appearances than Harper. He has more at bats than Harper. Um, he has uh, more hits, a higher average. His on base has to be higher. I'm not sure, but there's no way it's not. Um, his OPS is lower. Harper has a higher OPS. He has a few more home runs. But Soto's on a tear right now, and if he can be, if he can get to Harper's home runs, I think that's like a lock for Soto. I mean, nobody really is thinking of Soto for the MVP right now, and Harper. Although, and a lot of people are just writing off Soto because he's on the Nationals and um, and they're not they're not in the running for any any type of postseason. So like they have sixty eight wins or something. So everyone just wants to give it to Harper because they're a game back of the Braves now can make the um, and can make the playoffs. But Soto's stats are better than Harper's. I mean, that just that in my opinion, I think Soto should des- deserves the MVP. I mean, I know. The MVP, most valuable player, most valuable to your team, but I don't know. I I just feel like Soto's stats just say alone. He's just such a good hitter. Like I get that Harper's doing his team is winning, but Soto's just at another level with hitting. And you're not picking Harper to win the MVP because of his fielding. So I don't know. I think they're gonna give it to Harper, but I think it'd be cool if uh, Juan Soto gets it. Uh, be my prediction from before the season started, but now moving on to the World Series. So originally I picked the Dodgers and Yankees, and I do think it's going to be the Dodgers still in the in the World Series. But the Yankees, I'm not too sold on. Um, I wasn't sold on them before the season started, but I couldn't just there was no one else I could think that could give them a run for their money because the White Sox I didn't think would be that like as dominant as people thought, and they weren't. They had a lot of injuries and stuff, but. They just clinched it yesterday, I think. So um, they're in the playoffs, obviously, but I, I just don't. And my big reason was why why was because Eloy was hurt, but he's back now. So you could see it. If, if they get hot, there's no reason why they can't make it to the World Series. But the Yankees, as of now, they're one game ahead of the Blue Jays for the wild card. So they're a wild card team um, behind the Red Sox and Rays. So uh, they can make the playoffs. They there's no reason why they shouldn't. They're seven and three in their last ten, I think, and the Blue Jays are five and five. Or so they're they're on a roll. But so if they make the playoffs, I, I think I, at this point, since they are making the playoffs, I'm gonna pick the Dodgers and Yankees just to keep my prediction from before the season. But I would love to see the Blue Jays in the World Series. I think they are such a talented team, and obviously they're one game back of the Yankees. So right now they're not even in the playoffs. So if a wild card team is gonna make the gonna make the world series that that'd be so cool if it was the blue jays because not a lot of people pick them um to even make the playoffs let alone win a world series make it to a world series but they got so much veteran experience in in um in george springer so i think that's going to help them a ton and george springer hasn't been that amazing this year but in the playoffs he's insane uh, usually so in Vlad's an MVP candidate Simeon's an MVP candidate Bo Bichette's a great shortstop uh, Robbie Ray's an AL Cy Young candidate so they have so many guys that can help them get to a World Series and the record they have 85 wins that's good that's 
that's what one or two less than the White Sox, and the White Sox have the division, and the Blue Jays are looking out wild card right now. So, um, so no, it's definitely impressive what they're doing. I think though, um, I think the best possibility right now is going to be the Dodgers and Astros again. That'd be a cool World Series to see the Dodgers as some revenge against the Astros because that's the year they cheated. So. Um, but but I'm gonna stick with the Dodgers and Yankees for my official pick because of uh, that being my pick before the season started. But uh, yeah, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of the Athletes Corner podcast. Uh, make sure to leave questions, comments, anything you have below, uh, and we'll get to them in the next episode. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.